All right, so we ended off the last video uh, where we were talking about the system definition phase by talking about how it's important for users to be included in the SDLC. Well, here in the requirements analysis phase, uh, we are really going to take that to heart. Uh, a lot of the work here will be talking to users, getting their feedback on what works and what doesn't in existing systems, uh, getting requirements you know, for new systems, getting information from them about what they need in order to do their job. Um, that's going to be the focus of this whole phase. And then once we get all of that information, we actually start creating the requirements that each of the different components of the information system needs to be able to fulfill. This list of requirements will actually be guidelines for what we need to make the information system do. So it will give us some structure for us to actually start defining the different pieces of the information system. It's a very important piece of the life cycle. If the requirements of a system are wrong, then the system itself is wrong because the requirements are actually what define what the system actually does so we have the system definition phase which talks about like what the system is what it will be able to accomplish but the requirements analysis is where we get into what the system does it does these operations it does these tasks it works with this data in this particular way it takes in this user input it gives the user this output it communicates with these systems in these ways all that kind of stuff that's where we start talking about uh, what the system is actually doing when it will be able to run um, so that's why we say if the requirements are wrong, the system is wrong. Because if we have incorrectly defined what the system will do, well, then we will build the system incorrectly and then the system itself will be wrong. So to our best ability, we have to determine all of our requirements completely and correctly. The way we're going to do this is we're going to conduct extensive user interviews. Um, we're going to spend a lot of time talking with people who have a stake in this information system who will be working with this information system and will be getting the information about what it needs to do um, the kinds of things that will make their job possible or will benefit their job and of course you know you don't take necessarily everything they say as a hard law of this is what needs to happen because sometimes certain requirements are more nice to haves than I need to have this and trying to get everything completed could possibly put you over budget and time but it's really important to get that information and this is where good communication skills and good business uh, experience is really helpful because you can actually try to uh, coax that information out of the user the future user maybe without them even realizing that you're doing it. Uh, you might be able to help them realize, oh, you know, here's another thing that is really important for me. If you're able to ask them the right questions to sort of lead their brains in that direction. So even without technical skills per se, uh, you know, having really, really good business knowledge can be really important for processes like these, being really good at communication and, you know, general working with people is going to be super helpful for actually figuring out these requirements. What you're also going to do is maybe uh, compare and contrast some existing systems that are similar to the system that you are building, but that don't quite work and try to figure out what those systems do that is really helpful and what those systems don't do that you need this ad additional functionality for. And maybe you include those systems in your information system, maybe you don't include them at all. 
but at least you know knowing what uh systems are out there that could possibly be used and what gaps you would have to fill in if you use those systems versus if you're designing something else what equivalent functionality you would have to design and maybe what extra stuff you don't have to worry about as well as uh, all that other stuff you would have had to do anyway to fill in the gaps with the additional system but now are just the stuff you are making you know figuring out all of that is another really important part as well. You must have requirements for all five of the information system components. Everything from what hardware specifications do we need or do we need any specific uh, custom hardware built to the software? Do we need any custom software? Or do we need to use something else that has these features in it to the data? to the procedures, you know, what are the people going to have to do in order to interact with this um, new system that we're making, to the people as well, like what expertise are we looking for for the people who are interacting with our information system, or if this is being made for existing users, um, what uh, knowledge do they have and how do we tailor our information system to work with that set of knowledge rather than requiring something that they don't necessarily have. Uh, this, all these requirements will be for everything from web pages that are involved in this system to the forms and reports and queries that are involved with the databases, um, any sort of features and functions from any applications that are being included in here, all that stuff is really important. And of course, include security, especially for stuff that you're building for your own, um, building on your own, especially for anything that is facing the web to avoid people um, typing in uh, bad queries for a form or something like that and completely destroying your databases, all that kind of stuff, bringing on a security expert to help see you know, where security vulnerabilities could lie and preparing for those ahead of time rather than trying to patch security holes after the system is already implemented. That's all really important here. And then once you have all of your requirements, uh, all of the users who will be invested in the system must review the requirements and approve them and say, hey, you know, this covers everything that I need. I don't see anything missing here. Or if they um, see anything that is missing, they can give feedback and say, I don't see this functionality represented, or I don't, I don't, this could possibly involve this functionality, but I'm concerned about this particular thing not being explicitly represented. Can you make sure that this is explicitly represented so I can do my job or something like that? This is the easiest and cheapest time to alter the information system before you have even really started creating it. You want to make sure that the information system does what it's supposed to, and you can do that best by making these revisions on the requirements. It's a lot harder to listen to user feedback and make a change if you are already in the middle of building the project, because then you have to make a whole bunch of possible changes. On the other hand, if you're just in the requirements phase, um, then you can just change a few lines on a bulleted list in a Word document or something like that, and it can sometimes be that easy. So you might go through a process of making requirements, um, presenting it to the user, altering it, presenting to the user, altering it, presenting, etc., etc. But once you get there, then you have a good system design, and you can feel confident that you're making the right system for the job. Something else that can be helpful is a working prototype. It is a functional mock-up of some piece of the information system. The idea is that you're looking for functionality over polish. So for example, you might have a prototype of a database application that the user can interact with. They put in certain pieces of data and they get some information out of. You just mock up some really, really simple thing and the user who is helping you determine the requirements 
can test out this form and get the data and say, hey, I really liked this part. You should keep it in the requirements. Uh, here's something that I didn't like. Can you change this in the real system? And you can take that feedback and actually um, you know, make changes in the requirements and have a better informed set of requirements. It makes that really easy. Um, so it allows the users and designers to discover issues in the requirements. If you follow the requirements in making a prototype and present that to the user, then you can say, hey, um, what do you think about this? Uh, how do you think about the way that we have interpreted and created this prototype based on the requirements? And the user can give that feedback and you um, modify the requirements, maybe update a prototype and then give that back again. Uh, it can really help make sure that the user sees the functionality that they need to see in the final system if they are given that functionality at the uh, very beginning of it all. Problem is, it can be really expensive to develop a prototype, especially if it's a more complicated prototype or multiple prototypes for different systems. And if you have to develop multiple prototypes across different revisions and all that kind of stuff, uh, usually the requirements analysis uh, is made before full funding is given. You might get uh, a bit of like pilot funding. You're essentially doing like a, a pilot study or like a, a smaller um, piece of the system's development uh, process where you are essentially saying, hey, we'll do some research. We'll try to make up requirements for a system and then we'll present these requirements and the benefits that we think we would get from building a system with these requirements to the um, you know people who actually control your funding and then once they see these requirements and if you are able to convince them that this is necessary then they unlock full funding. If full funding comes after the requirements are already made, but you need funding in order to make a prototype, but you need the prototype in order to make the requirements, then it you're in a little bit of a bind, unfortunately. So sometimes the best solution is just make it as cheap as possible. Uh, maybe even draw it on sticky notes and like pass different sticky notes to show the different f uh, flows of the system or something like that. Ideally, you want something that they can interact with on a computer so they get more of an idea of like physically interacting with the program, what that will be like at the end product. Um, you know, maybe if you do some fancy things with PowerPoint or if you do some fancy things with Visual Basic, which we have a class for in the CBiz department, uh, you can make those prototypes for at least some of the software side of things pretty quick if you get to be a fast coder. But yeah, prototypes are very nice to have. Uh, they can be a little expensive, but if you can make them, then absolutely make them. All right, well, that is the requirements analysis phase. Uh, once the requirements analysis is completed and all of the requirements are finally approved by everyone, that's when the actual design of the five information system components comes into play. So that's what we'll talk about next.